And may the peace, the joy, and the power of our Lord be with every one of my brothers, sisters, and friends. Where are you and how are you? Today we're going to talk about a subject that we need. Holiness in our own homes. Holiness with our family. Purity in our inner circle. So stay tuned. We're going to be reading on Psalm 101. And uh, before that, uh, uh, I want to invite you to pray with us, if you're not part of our groups, to read the Bible with us, to give with us, and to become a mentor with us. We need hundreds of new leaders and new mentors. So welcome to this meeting, and possibly you will be receiving today, or you will be texting. You can text me uh, via messenger. So we are one way or another connected. There have been a few changes in Facebook, but here we are. May the Lord bless you and embrace you greatly, greatly, greatly. So holiness at home. You know, beyond your words, when you leave your house, you will probably carry an aroma, some kind of uh, smell, hopefully a good smell. You know, uh, we have some good neighbors here that we met, very nice people. They are from India. And and I would like to tell you, thank you, my wife tells me that my camera is a little bit low. I would like to tell you that uh, even driving by their home, uh, we can smell the beautiful aromas of the Indian food. Very delicious, of course, my wife and I enjoy Indian food. But it is something that comes out of their home. And even driving through, you can smell it. Beyond your words, the aroma of your house, the spiritual aroma of your house, will be felt around you. That's why we are going to study Psalm 101. Get ready for this. It's a life-changing experience. This is one of the Psalms that from time to time I read, from time to time I preach, because I want to constantly apply it to my own life. A pledge to live righteously. Psalm 101, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And uh, it says this way, I will sing of your love and justice, Lord. I will praise you with songs. I will be careful to live a blameless life. When will you come to help me? Remember the word help. Holiness on our own terms is terrible. It's very difficult. It's impossible. That's why we need to as the help of the Lord. I will lead a life of integrity in my own home. I will refuse to look at anything vile or vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. I will reject perverse ideas and stay away from every evil. Remember that, every evil. That's holiness. Holiness is complete or is nothing. I will not tolerate people who slander their neighbors. I will not endure conceit and pride. I will search for faithful people to be my companions. Only those who are above reproach will be allowed to serve me. I will not allow deceivers to serve in my house, and liars will not stay in my presence. And this is the final verse. My daily task will be to ferret out the wicked and free the city of the Lord from their grip. So here you have a combination of the word home and then city. Because it actually refers to the same thing. The house of David was not only his household, but also it refers to his government. I encourage you to take this psalm. If you would just read these eight verses every day this week and apply them, I am sure there will be changes in your life and your behavior. So, introduction. The process begins with worship. Holiness is about God imparting to us. It's not about us. We cannot produce holiness. Only with the grace of God, with the power of the Holy Spirit in us, then we can have purity in our own homes. For those who are struggling in your marriage, in your relationship with your children or children with your parents, with, in homes where there is strife or disillusion or disappointment or, or uh, screaming or yelling or cuss words or curses, 
this word is for you. And those homes that are doing relatively well, this word is for you because God will take us from faith to faith, from glory to glory. So, number one, five principles I want to share with you of holiness at home. Number one, purify your behavior at home. When you reform your home, you can reform the nation. The beginning of a transformation of a city or a nation is when Christians in their homes, they practice holiness. It says here, I will sing of your love and justice, and then I will praise you with songs. And then it says, I will be careful to live, live a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will lead a life of integrity in my own home. So number one, purify your conduct. Every conduct, no excuses. Every behavior, every action, every reaction has to be like the behavior of Jesus Christ. Number two, purify your eyes when you are at home. Why at home? Because that's the beginning, usually the beginning of the day. The rest of the day, whether you go to work, do you go to the university, do you to the industry, you do errands. When your eyes have been purified in your home, then you will keep your eyes pure the rest of the day. Notice that the trends of YouTube, Google, Facebook, etc., they are uh, uh, are favoring a lot, a lot of promotion of sexual immorality, a lot of promotion of uh, 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 political, I should say, uh, I ideologies that are anti-Christian. But my friends, we are praying for Facebook, we are praying for Google, for YouTube, for TikTok, for all the big uh, giants of the internet. We are praying for revival in their midst and that those who are Christians working there, they will be people of righteousness. So it says here, I will refuse, verse 3, I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. Do you know you can program, you can set your uh, your YouTube page at least uh, to ask them not to send you pornography or not to send sensuality. And uh, I notice it works because they are, you know, sometimes they target if you're a man, if you're more than 18 years old, chances are you're being targeted by that kind of commercial or propaganda, but you can do something about it. Begin to put filters, Begin to, uh, be sure you share your YouTube uh, uh, password with your family, with your spouse. And so accountability and purity and transparency, God will bless you for this and he will help you to do it. But it says, the, the psalmist says, I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. And so imagine in those days, the Eastern Palace where David was, he's writing, he's a new king now, and he's writing this promise, this covenant of living a righteous life. And he's, uh, and he's saying, in, in those Eastern Palace, understand that there were often so much lust and, and extravagances and self-indulgence, but this ruler will behave in a different way. He wants to honor God in his house and in his government. Number three, purify your ideas at home, your thinking. We are so influenced by these ideologies, and many of them are anti-Christians. But David says, I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. I will reject perverse ideas and stay away from every evil. David was pursuing complete holiness. He had a, an understanding of 100% purity. And here it seems like it's his effort. He's saying, I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. Still, it's good intentions, but he needed the help of God. Number four, purify your words at home. Words can revive your family or they can destroy the confidence of your family. They can wash or they can pollute. How many have words that we say that we wish we would have never said? And I encourage you, I urge you, purify your lips, your tongue. Speak the words of Jesus Christ. And when you mess up, ask forgiveness, repent, humble yourself, and you will have holiness 
in your home. Verse 5, it says, I will not tolerate people who slander their neighbors. So no gossip in my home. I will not endure conceit and pride. Number five, finally, purify your social life at home, including all your social media, your Facebook, your WhatsApp, your texting. And uh, I'm going to read a little bit on internet pornography here. This is statistics it just in the United States. And it says that uh, every second, I didn't say every day, every month, every week, every second, there are 20, more than 28,000 users that are watching pornography online. If this is true, right now, this very second, there are close to 29,000 people watching garbage. Thank God for the many hundreds of thousands that are watching Christian uh, Christian churches and Christian programs. But it also says that every second uh, there are $3,000 spent on pornography on the internet. Imagine if you thought we were giving too much to the church, those givers to pornography, they are not givers, they are investors in pornography. $3,000 a second. And then it says every second 372 people are typing the word or researching the word adult into a search engine. So it is poison online. You and I will be different. We will follow the heart of David when he said, I will not uh, endure conceit and pride in my family. And then he says in verse 6, I will search for faithful people to be my companions. Social media, right? Only those who are above reproach will be allowed to serve with me. I will not allow deceivers to serve in my house and liars, liars will not stay in my presence. In conclusion, my dear friend, my brother, my sister, we wish that David had lived this principle more consistently, one commentator says. Instead, David uh, fell into adultery later on. And I believe today I receive an answer, at least an understanding of why a man after God's heart would fall into such a low uh, behavior. is because he was trusting too much in himself. He's saying, Lord, help me. But then he said, I will do this, do this, do this. It reminds me of Peter when he said, I will never deny you, Lord. That uh, false self-confidence is not right, especially when it comes to righteousness and holiness and salvation. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot sanctify ourselves. So here is the key, my beloved friends. Rely on him. Notice how the wording of David changed because later on, after he repented from the adultery, he says to the Lord, create in me a clean heart, O Lord. He didn't say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a clean heart. He said, Lord, you create in me a clean heart. So I urge you to aim for 100% holiness, like this Psalm 101 says, and at the same time, to rely completely on the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for these moments together with our people. And I pray, O oh God, that we will understand how holiness works. That yes, you call us to sanctify ourselves, to be holy. And yet, without you, we can do nothing. So today, in humility, we come to you and we say, Lord, sanctify us, purify us completely. Purify our actions at home. Purify our, the way we look at people, our ideas, our words, our social life. Purify us 100%. I pray, O oh God, for a baptism of holiness right now on the internet. And everyone who will be watching this video, that they will be completely, miraculously sanctified. Lord, just like you baptized me with holiness, give our people the same holiness. Fire of purity upon you, my brother and my sister. In Jesus' name we pray this and we declare it. Just like we receive salvation, we receive sanctification through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. And the people of God says, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Have a great day. God bless you.